Hey readers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire Books, and this is my January wrap-up. I read 12 books during the month of January, and I think that's pretty good. That's a heavy reading month, and so I am going to take it as a good omen for 2021, because how can a month where you read a lot be all that bad? The very first book I read this month was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This book is about a woman whose cousin has gotten married to this sort of inaccessible mysterious man who has moved her out into a very rural isolated area and she started sending letters home that indicate some sort of derangement like she's not doing okay and so the main character goes out there to visit her cousin becomes embroiled in the bizarre politics of the family that she now lives with and meanwhile, there's a lot of really creepy stuff happening in their house. They have this beautiful old rich person house that is still somehow dim and stuffy and in a state of decay. And things just get creepier and creepier until the big reveal. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the twist was. What I will tell you is that I really love the book up until I found out what it was. I'm very funny about this with horror or suspense of any kind. I really like... I almost like the part where they don't tell you what's going on better, where you're just scared and you don't know what's happening. Once I did, I was less excited by the book, but it was fun, it was exciting, and it was a good read. The second book I read was The Lying Life of Adults by Elena Ferrante, and this book was about a young girl who basically hears her parents say that she's ugly. Except that you quickly find out that that's not actually what her dad said. He says that she looks like his estranged sister whom he absolutely hates. And so this triggers the main character's obsession with her aunt. She eventually contrives to meet her aunt and she gets involved in these kind of two sides of her family and learns about how adults lie and eventually becomes a liar herself because aren't we all? Well, I appreciated a lot of what the book was doing, I found that a teenage, extremely dramatic main character was sort of unpleasant to live with through the duration of the book. So I gave it three stars, but I also think that it's a really quality piece of work. If you have a high tolerance for extremely unlikable characters, then you might like this one better than I did. Your mileage may vary. This month I read three works of fantasy. One that was just so sweet. I finally read The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Kloon. Oh, what a warm hug, sweet, just, oh, it was a nice book. I think that a lot of it actually was not as original as it felt while I was reading it. it, it in many ways, it felt like I was a kid again, reading a kid's book. And I think that's actually a really, really good thing. There's something about this book that even though it didn't necessarily break a lot of new ground, it had this really homey, familiar feeling. And it was just so charming and the humor was really likable. And I think that... I'll probably eventually read it again as a comfort read. I would in fact recommend this to anyone for that particular purpose. Basically what this book is about is a man who works for the government as a case manager who goes to orphanages for magical children who are stigmatized in society. And he's normally just very efficient and he makes honest reports about what's going on. He does have some sympathy for these kids, but he doesn't really understand their plight. And then he ends up going to a very special house with a very hot caretaker and the Antichrist. It's great. Um, so if you are looking for something that's quirky, cute, sweet, this is the one. I also read two fantasy books from the Faithful and Fallen series by John Gwynn. I read Malice and I read Valor. And then to be honest with you, I returned the whole series to the library because I just wasn't feeling it. Both of the books were okay but they weren't, I want to read another 1600 pages plus of this, okay? And I was already 1600 or so pages in, and I just decided to cut my losses. I feel like as a fantasy series, it's not like it's bad, but it also wasn't really catching me. I didn't think it was very memorable. I thought it was just another standard, chunky, epic fantasy. So if that's what you're looking for, you might really, really like it. But for me, I just didn't want to keep investing time in something that was just okay when I could look for the next read that really knocked my socks off.
I listened to three audiobooks, so I really have taken to listening to audiobooks in the car. That was something I never thought I would do, but here we are. And I listened to three of them this month. The first one was Putin's People by Catherine Belton. And it is a very disturbing account of how Russian oligarchs have twisted the economy of Russia, killed democracy there, and also embedded themselves into Western markets where they spend a whole lot of money and are also now poised to cause a lot of trouble. Um, she, Belton does in fact describe the Trump family's relationships with a lot of Russian bank rollers, and it was not comforting. But it's a really, really fascinating account of Putin's rise to power and you know, his life and his rise in our, in one of our big rival nations. So I highly recommend it just to know something interesting about the world. The next audiobook that I listened to was Mediocre, The Dangerous Legacy of White Male America by Ijeoma Aluo. And I thought it was excellent. She has an amazing way of writing about problems in our country that are really thorny and difficult to talk about in language that is super clear and that gets right to the point. So Aluo traces the sort of idea of white male coddling through the years in ways that were really interesting. Like she starts with Buffalo Bill. She covers Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, which I think fair is fair. She talked about football and how it was originally a very non-integrated sport. Basically, she manages to touch on how our willingness to promote white maleness above all else touches our lives in ways that maybe we didn't expect and in ways that go back into history longer than we might have imagined. If you want to read something that is just very enlightening and that drops a lot of really good truth bombs while also just being a chill, well-written read, I think Mediocre is a really great choice. And then my third audiobook was short and amusing. It was called Pee Wee's Confessions of a Hockey Parent. And it was by Rich Cohen, who is a sports writer. Uh, this is basically a work of creative nonfiction that traces a father's experience supporting his son during his son's hockey season. And the drama among the parents, the drama with the coaches, the drama with the kids, the way that he describes the kids is that they're sports stars. It's all, there's something about it that's really very charming. Um, it's also very clear how unhealthy our culture is around our children's achievement instead of just letting them have fun. But that's also part of what makes the book so luridly fascinating. And if you want to just read a light amusing, maybe truer than we want it to be accounts of a parent-child relationship around that child's activities, then I think that Pee Wee's might be really, really fun for you. I certainly found it very pleasant and it definitely had some laugh out loud moments. I definitely cracked up in my car when he described one of the kids puking on the ice and them just like leaving it and continuing the game. It was so gross. It was so funny. I read one book for my teacher book club at work, and that was The Girl with Seven Names by Hyun So Lee. And that is a real life account of Lee's escape from North Korea. She actually is someone who grew up relatively privileged there and didn't, and didn't necessarily mean to defect, but she gets curious about China, she crosses the river, and she can't get back. So she has to adjust to life in a new country and then figure out what she's going to do to live the best version of her life. And she also has to deal with the loss of and the estrangement from her family for many, many years. The way that she describes what happens in North Korea is interesting because it's sometimes it feels like it's rare to read work from someone who really loves North Korea and who loves their home country and their culture while also seeing the problems. You know, normally we just think of North Korea, ugh. but reading her perspective as somebody who had lived a pretty good life there, somebody whose relatives did not necessarily want to leave was very eye-opening. I think it gave me a better perspective on that country and why people continue to calmly live in autocratic societies. So if you want a quick, harrowing, very entertaining read, I think The Girl with Seven Names is a very good choice. And then achievement of the month, I finished off the 2020 Booker Prize shortlist. So I had been on a quest to read them all. So this month I read This Mortal Body by Tsitsi Dungaremga. I read Shuggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. And I just finished up Burnt Sugar by Avni Dashi. So I won't go into too much detail about these because I actually have done in-depth video reviews for them. The one for Burnt Sugar is gonna come out on Friday. But This Mortal Body is about a woman in Zimbabwe who's gotten a Western education, but she hasn't actually gotten to enjoy the success that should have come with that. She's bitter. She doesn't wanna to return to her family in her hometown, but she ends up having to do so and there's a lot of humiliation and just difficulty in that story. I found the book very interesting and 
I'm still kind of thinking about it, actually. But it was also really brutal to read. It was almost so unpleasant that I didn't get as much out of it as I wanted to. Shiggy Bane, I could absolutely see why it won the 2020 Booker Prize. It is about a son who is dealing with his own identity as he grows up, as well as with his mother's alcoholism. It is just beautiful. It is so heartbreaking, but the writing is gorgeous, and the way that all of the characters are depicted makes you angry at them, but you also feel for them. It was just an absolutely stunning novel, and I'm so glad that I read it. And then Burnt Sugar, I loved it, I hated it. It was a really rough book in a lot of ways, but it was also a really interesting and I think important meditation on how it feels to be a daughter caring for a mother who never really cared for her. So that's what I read this January. I feel like I've had a great reading month. Hopefully February is just as good because nothing feels better than reading a lot of books that really interest you and then getting to talk about them. So hopefully it'll happen again and hopefully you enjoyed this wrap up. If you did, please do like and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment if you've read any of these or have any recommendations for me and happy reading.